one of the stories that has quietly gotten pushed aside because of the Latin Mass getting abrogated is the story of Francis's push to remake the church into the Catholic version of the Anglican Communion through the process of endless synods, but especially through the coming Synod on Synods, which will be a two-year process to remake the church in the image of Paca Papa Francis. This synod will be a virtual de facto Third Vatican Council, or perhaps more accurately, a part of the ongoing de facto Third Vatican Council that has included past synods like the Amazon Synod and all the preceding synods that Francis has overseen. The man is the living, breathing embodiment of the spirit of the council, and a part of his mission in life seems to be to see that the council is fulfilled in all of its aims, and one aim was to promote the church on the level of the bishops at the expense of a common unity, but done in the name of a common unity. If that doesn't make sense, then maybe a word from one of Francis's closest cardinal allies will help with all of this. So let's get into the story and link it to the end of the Latin Mass, since none of these stories should be taken in isolation. These are all interconnected. Now, if there was an overt theme to Francis's motu proprio, traditionus custodis, it was the concept of unity, of communion. Not communion as in the Holy Eucharist, but communion as in togetherness, being of one belief and of one common denominator. Francis said he was beginning the process of abrogating the Latin Mass for the purpose of unity in the Church. As I and numerous others have pointed since that document was released, the claim is on its face nonsense. It is beyond preposterous, but this concept of unity permeates everything in the Church right now, to the point where co communion and unity have become buzzwords of a sort. It is truly a strange time we live in because we are told unity for its own sake is the highest ideal. Well, countless laity reject that which truly unites us, common belief in the dogmas of the faith, including and especially in the real presence of our blessed Lord in the Eucharist. But don't let that dissuade the prelates close to the pack of Papa for continuing to plan another one of their pointless synods that they will attempt to use to remake the church into something new. From the Vatican News Agency, we get the following story. Now, for those not in the know, Vatican News Agency is like the BBC or NPR of Vatican City. Headline. Cardinal Graish, the Church is synodal because it is a communion. Interview with the Secretary of the Synod of Bishops. Synodality is the form that realizes the participation of all the people of God in mission. If that sounded like modernist new church buzzword salad, you'd be correct. But maybe I'm being unfair. Let's see what the Cardinal says here, because it sure looks like unity and participation of highest values in the new church. The piece is by one of the chief mouthpieces for the Vatican, Andrea Tornielli, who asks Cardinal Graish about the progress he is making in remaking the church, or in his words, setting the church on a new path. The Cardinal responds, quote, To create a synod, one must be a synod. Before the publication on, of the document on the synodal process, we listen to the executives of all the assemblies of the Continental Bishops' Conferences, together with the chair of the U.S. Bishops' Conference and the chair of the Canadian Bishops' Conference. Then, immediately following the publication of the document, we extended an invitation to the heads of all the bishops' conferences, their permanent councils, and general secretaries for a fraternal conversation, during which they had the opportunity to comment, make suggestions, and even ask questions. In all, we held eight meetings divided by language. Two other moments of consultation were one with the patriarchs of the Eastern Churches and the other with the major archbishops. In addition, we accepted the invitation of the bishops' conferences of Brazil, Burundi, and Antilles, who asked us for a meeting specifically with them, end quote. Ah, I love buzzwords, I really do, but Andrea Tornielli asks the pertinent question here. What is the purpose of all this? I know the sea, and I know that for long voyage by ship, the cardinal says, everything must be carefully prepared. The attention we are putting into the drafting of the preparatory document is part of this careful preparation. Of course, we must also agree on the reason for the journey. The Holy Father has assigned the theme of synodality to the 16th Ordinary Assembly. It is certainly a complex theme because it speaks of communion, participation, and mission. These are aspects of synodality and of a constitutively synodal church, as he said in his address on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the institution of the synod. For a synodal church, it is towards this that we must go, or rather, the Spirit asks us to go. I would like to clarify a misunderstanding. 
Many people think that synodality is a fad of the Pope. I hope none of us share this thought. In the various preparatory meetings, it became clear that synodality was the form and style of the early church. The preparatory document clearly highlights this, and it highlights how Vatican II, with the movement of return to the sources, the resourcement, wanted to recover the model of the church without renouncing any of the great advances of the church in the second millennium. If we want to be faithful to tradition, the council should be considered as the most recent stage of tradition, we must boldly go down this path of the synodal church. Synodality is a category that best comprises all the conciliar themes that in the post-conciliar period have often been opposed to one another. I am thinking above all of the ecclesiological category of the people of God, which unfortunately has been opposed to that of hierarchy, insisting on a church from below. In instrumentalizing participation as a claim, not far from that of the trade unions, end quote. And that is a lot of nonsense. But at least he's talking openly about making what the church believes be a subject entirely to the laity now. But we have to be clear about something. The idea of getting back to the early church is condemned by the church itself as the er error of archaeologism. And I'll define that for you here. From the source which is Pope Pius XII, and I'm going to do it by way of Unum Sanctum, because that blog has a good piece on this, in which they say, quote, Archaeologism is not a heresy as so much as a trend, a certain approach to Catholic liturgy and practice. Its distinguishing characteristic is an excessive value placed on those Catholic practices which came earlier in historical chronological succession. For the archaeologist, first is always best. A practice or prayer of the patristic church is better or purer than a practice of the medieval church. Consequently, the goal of any true liturgical renewal ought to be to return to the practice of the first Christians, in as much as possible. The modern church ought to imitate the apostolic church. End quote. That is what Cardinal Grish and Paca Papa Francis are saying here, and it permeates the, most, the post-conciliar era. This is to be distinguished from those critiques of Vatican II, which point to doctrinal and liturgical errors rooted in or inspired by heresy that must be corrected, even if that means the hierarchy must undo the work of what gets called a council of the church. Tradition and archaeologism are not the same thing in the slightest. One of the distinguishing features of the era of archaeologism is the idea that the laity ran the church in the early years of the church. <sighs> Disregard Paul's authoritative letters he wrote as a bishop of the church that would give direct commands to the churches around the Christian world at the time, telling them that what they could and could not do, including rather explicit commands telling the laity that they were wrong to do X, Y, and Z. We are told that the new Mass is inspired by early church practices, with no evidence at all to back that claim up. Some of what the church teaches now is alleged to come from the early church, again, with no evidence. A good overview of all of this comes from Father Anthony Chicada's book, The Work of Human Hands. Yes, I know he's a <gasps> set of a contest priest, or was. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Father Chicada, please. But his book is widely considered in traditional circles that are not set of not among set of a contest even as being one of the best analyses of the new mass and by extension of the council and the council fathers itself. And in that book, he goes over the error of archaeologism in depth and how there is virtually no evidence for much of what the modernists claim about the early church. But this gets to the point about the ending of the Latin mass by Francis. As I said in my video earlier this week. Francis's overt claim was that he was taking this action to preserve unity in the church, which is, to borrow a phrase from a philosopher that I don't agree with on much of anything, Jeremy Bentham, the claim by Francis is nonsense on stilts. Eric Salmon said this on Twitter, that the real problem in the church is heresy and apostasy, which doesn't seem to bother these people in any way. Quote, Complaining about the crackdown of the TLM when heresy and apostasy are left alone isn't a case of whataboutism. It's showing that acceptance of rampant heresy and apostasy is the Pope's apparent conception of the Vatican II Church he's requiring us to affirm. End quote. Consider this. We are experiencing an ending of the Latin Mass in parishes where people actually believe what the Church teaches. I know that sounds just fantastical. These people hold to what the Church says to be true and has said to be true over the ages. And those groups are the ones that are being targeted. All the while, we are told that it is needed to, do, to level the church, to bring the laity up. Consider the implications of that. What matters isn't what we believe so much as long as we all believe it together. 
That is why Francis is focused on a synod of synods with heavy lay participation, instead of cracking down on the lack of belief in the real presence and public centers receiving communion. Because unity along a brand line around a materialist gospel is what is important to these prelates, not unity in what we believe as professing Catholics. That is what is underlying all of this. This idea of the listening to the laity is especially laughable. There have been numerous videos and open letters published by young faithful Catholics who plead with Francis to keep the Latin Mass intact and access to it easily available, telling their testimony of how the traditional Mass has enriched their lives and bolstered their faith. What has come of it? What will come of it? Probably nothing, at least from Rome. We'll get silence from Rome. And why? Because some voices matter to the modernists, and it ain't traditional Catholics. Let's be honest for a moment. Who is time made for? It isn't Cardinal Zen, not Cardinal Burke, or his dubia, not Bishop Fillet and his concerns about Vatican II and his continuity with the rest of church history. No, but certainly with the man I call Caesar, the ultra-super-devout man who uses his considerable power and influence to undermine the church's teaching on literally every front. Those are the options the Vatican seems to care about, not the voices seeking the traditional faith and traditional liturgy and traditional sacraments. Bears the thought of unity with them, with us. Anyone doesn't understand where our hostility to all things Francis comes from. It's this absurdity I just described for you. Some opinions in the springtime of the Church of the New Advent count more than others. Traditionally minded Catholics are clearly in that latter group, and Caesar is in the former. Once you accept that, then all becomes clear. Don't take this story in isolation. The suppression of the Latin Mass is part of the larger stories in the Church. And today, to that end, I covered synodality and its connection to the Mass, but tomorrow I plan to cover the next papal conclave, because it relates as well. Unless something big breaks between now and then, but the plan is to go over the talk of a conclave, because the modernists are openly talking about the next conclave. So be ready for it. Maybe they know something is up. But until then, let me know your thoughts in the comments, please. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. It actually does help. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.